What if we told you that you could get 15% faster or stronger just by taking this pill? And that this pill was totally legal, safe, and free. Would you take it? What's the catch? The truth is that this pill contains only sugar. No magical drugs or supplements, just a little bit of regular sugar. So what on earth is going on? This is a video about placebos and how the power of the mind alone can improve your performance. We're gonna show you how you can think yourself faster. This will blow your mind. First, let's define what a placebo is. So a placebo is a treatment or an intervention that has no specific physiological impact on the condition it's supposed to be treating. I mean, it can be taken in the form of a, a pill, a saline injection, a drink, or whatever you like. The placebo effect is a measurable improvement in the symptoms or performance of an individual because of the belief, context and expectation of what they're taking, rather than the chemistry and biology of it. To demonstrate this, we're going to do an experiment on some unsuspecting cyclists. They're going to perform some fitness tests for us, a baseline fitness test and then one where we give them a placebo. However, they don't know that they're going to be taking a placebo. We're telling them that they're taking a new, top secret, but totally legal, performance enhancing supplement that's currently being taken by top Tour de France cyclists. But our deception goes deeper than just a sugar pill. And that's because placebos are massive and they're an incredibly important field within science and have been heavily researched. Any well-designed study looking at any new drug has to account for placebos. But to find out more about the impacts of placebos on athletes, I spoke to Professor Chris Beedy, who's an honorary professor in cognition and neuroscience from the University of Kent and an expert in placebos in sport. Well, a placebo technically is any uh, substance or technique uh, device that purports to be something that it isn't. We tend to think of placebos in the sort of medical space or the, the nutritional space in which it is a capsule or a some form of vehicle for a drug which actually contains anything. Well, it doesn't contain the drug. It usually contains something like corn flour or some sort of starch or something that actually allows the person, the recipient, to believe that they have taken a drug when in actual fact they have taken nothing at all. We use placebos purporting to be anything from sort of caffeine, creatine, anything in that sort of effective but legal um, space in terms of elite performance, in terms of you know the real world, there is quite a lot of evidence that a lot of substances that have been given to athletes that are technically illegal um, and potentially dangerous don't actually have a direct mechanism of effect, but can be considered placebo simply because the mere fact of taking that particular substance or that particular pill has an effect on the performance of the athlete. A big part of this is the culture of the sport as a player. One of the important parts of that context is the athlete's belief. You know, it, does the athlete it, does the athlete believe that actually, generally speaking, taking a capsule is going to make them go faster? What we have is a cultural expectation that things that come in capsule form will help performance that so this is normalized in our in our sport with that in mind i did some research and came up with a cunning plan scientists have even researched what the medicine looks like as if it comes in a big capsule like this it can have a bigger placebo effect than if it comes in a little white tablet color is important too as we have subliminal associations with different colors red is likely to have the biggest performance enhancing effect so naturally our placebo is going to be in the form of a big red and white capsule. So taste matters too. If a placebo tastes sweet or nice, then it typically won't have a, as big a, an effect as something that tastes like uh, So if something tastes bad or bitter, people subconsciously think that Wow, uh, there's a, this medicine must be doing something because why else would you have to consume something that tastes so bad? 
But that's not all. We can do more to psychologically prime our participants, such as before they even arrive at GCN Megabase, we're telling them about secrecy and that they're not allowed to consume certain substances before the test, such as caffeine. The fact that you can take a, improve your performance just by taking a pill, it does sort of raise the obvious question of, there's a sort of ethics thing here, but it's not illegal. You could give your riders a pill, telling them it's something else and getting them to take it, but it's not something else. It's like, and then it improves their performance. Yeah, and there's quite a few stories of that having been the case. Whether they're true or not is, is debatable. There's a lot of anecdotes in this space, but of course that's what we do in scientific research. We we tell the athletes that this is something that's going to make you go a lot faster. Um, you know, we usually give it to them in a in a form that looks. I, mean, I remember we did a one particular study, and one of the athletes afterwards we, we did a debrief of the athlete, and he said, "Yeah, he said, I looked at the capsule, and it looked like it meant business. The vehicle, the placebo itself." is a relatively unimportant component in the effect on the athlete's performance. There is a, whole, a far wider context to the effect on the athlete. I've also created this completely fictitious NDA and consent form that all the participants have to sign. This adds a layer of legitimacy to the experiment. It makes it feel more serious and raises the stakes. And it features a, and I'm rather proud of this, a completely fictitious pharmaceuticals company that have created the supplement who are based in Cambridge called Nova Athlema, which is a mixture of Latin and Greek for extra bull****. I will also reinforce their expectations by telling them that this pill should lower their overall perceived exertion, their time to exhaustion, and then just some general science babble about lactate buffering. It's going to be perfect. And then I'm going to deliver them the pills in these little capsule bottles that I got, which just look really legit. The opposite of a placebo is actually called the nocebo effect. And we can use this too. So for example, by priming people before they do an exercise test by telling them that, well, they simply look a bit tired or asking them if they slept well last night because they look tired, you can sort of manipulate them a little bit into second guessing themselves and in some cases doing a worse performance. Although it doesn't work for everyone. If positive expectations can change neurobiological responses in a positive direction, negative expectations can also change those neurobiological responses in a negative direction. And this becomes quite important when we look at things such as pain, where expectation of pain can enhance the experience of pain and expectation of fatigue can enhance the experience of fatigue. And of course, pain and fatigue are two of the key uh, sort of performance limiting factors that are most affected by placebos or more specifically by placebo effects. For our test, we have 10 unsuspecting participants who are going to perform 12 minute time trial full gas efforts for us with and without the placebo. We're going to do this as a randomized crossover. And this means each rider does a 12 minute effort with the placebo and a 12 minute effort without the placebo in a counterbalanced order. So that means five start with it and five start without it in week one, and then they swap for week two. We will measure the power output and the heart rate. The participants had quite a lot of questions, so I bored them to tears with some chat about the Krebs cycle, a good tactic. So basically, within the, Kre the Krebs cycle is essential for all life in all organisms. Everyone seemed very excited, swallowing both the pills and the lies. It made me wonder, are some of us more susceptible to placebos than others? So, can you tell me on the scale where you're at currently? Probably uh, six. Six? Oh, five, six, yeah, six. Six, okay. What's your breathing rate like? Your legs okay? Legs okay, breathing's obviously increased. Keep it going, keep it going. The way you get it all out. Come on, Tony. <laughs> Mega. Oh, mate. Seven, great stuff. <laughs> Before you know it, you're in the last two minutes and then you fly. Push, 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 everything, everything, get it all out. <coughs> Mega. Here we go. Full gas. 
to it, whatever. Go for a negative split strategy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just as hard as I can get. Nearly there. Go, 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 go. I'm like six. Six now, yeah, yeah. brilliant. Yes, there we go. Come on, you got this. Eight. Ah. Yes, there's the line. Go on, lad. Come on, you got this. Oh my word! Get it all out. Push, 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 push. Good job. Good job, mate. Often in moments of high challenge, high stress, um, if a person believes that they have received some form of helpful intervention, some form of advantage, whether they have or they haven't re actually received anything, that belief can have a quite a significant and substantial impact on their ability to produce physical and sometimes mental performance. Our participants did fantastic efforts all round in week one and the commitment was clear. We were excited to see how their efforts in week two would compare. How, uh, how's it been feeling? Well, hard. <laughs> hard, yeah. Oh, somewhat hard. <laughs> wow, what a finish. Right. Tell me where that ranks. I think I can guess. Ten, yeah. <laughs> Here's the 10. Go on, Tony. Dig in. Push, 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 push. RPE. Oh, very, very hard. Extreme. Having taken the placebo in week one, Tony was struggling to match his performance in week two. Unusually quick on the way home as well. You were quick being... on the way home in this. Yeah, that's crazy that you were like unusually quick on the way home after taking oh. it as well. My legs hurt. Legs hurt. But my breathing is bad. Hit me with a number. Ten! Keep going. Hold on now, ten seconds. Simon was also finding it harder, despite his good sleep score. You said that your HRV was better yeah. today. So last week I had a readiness score of about four and it's ten today. Right. Got better sleep last night. So even in spite of that? Yeah. How are you feeling a bit? Heart rate's right up there. Yeah. And it just starts a just a tiny bit stuck. <laughs> go, 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 go. How did that feel? Hard. Not easy. Last week. It was so hard. I think my legs are just fine. Quite the finish. So did you did it feel different then to last time? Yeah, like I went into the red so much sooner, felt the fatigue a lot quicker. Ah, oh, come on, come on! Ah! Definitely the loudest we've had. One intriguing difference was, irrespective of the power, most of the riders reported a lower perceived exertion with the placebo. How did it feel compared to last week? So, my legs are definitely heavier, but I had an increased load versus last week. Right, so you did more training this yeah. week? Yeah, heart rate. I think last week I got into 180, and I only broke 170 this week. The time went quicker. As a result, I think the relative effort is either sort of around the same or just under. But you, you reckon you, your perceived effort was less than last week? You just couldn't get the heart rate up? Yeah. <laughs> A lot harder to hold lower what? Hey, go, 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 Good job, mate. Oh, RPE? Oh, all out 10. 10. Yeah. Having performed the experiment, we then ethically had to reveal the deception to the participants, and then we could look at the results. The commitment was great to see, and I did feel bad about duping our participants, but this was in the name of science. Our results were fascinating. Before I explain them though, I think it's worth pointing out the main limitations within our test. The first one is that we only had 10 participants, and 
ideally you, you'd have a lot more, you get more meaningful results. The other one is that we weren't able to get the participants to do a, a 12 minute practice test before they did the experiment. And this is useful because it makes you more familiar with, with what it feels like to do a 12 minute test. So you can't just get better just because you're more used to doing 12 minutes, which can happen um, and might have happened in our results. The other thing to point out is just, well, you know, we're doing our best. And if you subscribe and you don't already subscribe, then that does allow us to improve what we do. So appreciate that. Um, so results, three of our participants had little change uh, in their 12 minute tests between taking the placebo and not taking it. Uh, three of our participants were actually worse with the placebo. <laughs> Of those three, I sort of had a, a look into the results a bit more. One of them didn't feel good when they took the placebo in week two. Um, one of them performed better in week two, having taken the placebo in week one, just because they were much more familiar with doing a 12 minute test um, and, and as a result did better. And the third of them that was worse with the placebo was Adam from GMBN. He was quite a bit worse. He was 8% worse with the placebo in week two. But that was largely down to the fact that he absolutely battered himself on a group ride the day before. Mountain bikers. When will they learn? However, four of our participants performed significantly better with the placebo. And this is where it gets really interesting. So Tony, was the best responder. He was 10% better with the placebo when he took it in week one, which in real terms was 30 watts more, which is massive. And he was so convinced of its effects, he even remarked that he did his fastest ever uh, bike ride home and um, he did his best ever time. I mean, amazing. Uh, Megan was 8% uh, better with the placebo when she took it. Uh, and Simon, who is no stranger to doing, you know, 12 minute efforts, he was 6% worse in week two without the placebo. Designer Kieran was 4.2% better in week two, uh, having taken the placebo. For context, to improve your power by just 4% is huge and would typically take a massive amount of training. So what is actually going on here? I was keen to speak to Professor Beedy. Whilst it's a relatively easy thing to study in, in a sports science lab, what you do need is quite high numbers of people who are very able to produce reliable performances week in, week out. Because if you ran that, those same two trials over, say, 12 weeks, and we've done studies where we've been looking at people over a year and a half, for example, um, and, and you're only seeing sort of one or two percent variation in their baseline levels of performance because you're measuring that periodically throughout that, then what you're able to do is calibrate very reliably any effect of any placebo intervention in between those baseline trials. Uh, placebos appear to have the effect of activating pathways that are known to reduce pain. So we, we know that there's a number of molecules, number of neurotransmitters that are involved in the analgesic response. So, you know, the opioid pathways, for example. So there's plenty of research that's demonstrated the activation, you know, in response, for example, placebo painkillers, we see the activation of those sort of pathways. I feel the take home message here is that you don't necessarily need to understand how a placebo works, but more just that it does work. The mind is an incredible thing, an incredibly powerful thing. And from speaking to Professor Beedy, it seems that the most important thing is to create a positive environment where you're able to believe that you will succeed at what you're going to do. And if I think of myself and things that I've done, all the little things like taking a gel 15 minutes before a race or waxing your chain or shaving your legs and cleaning your bike, because all of these little things don't just make you faster, they put you in a, a positive frame of mind where you believe that you will be faster. And that is the key. Now, I've found this absolutely fascinating. I hope you have too. Let us know your, your thoughts and comments uh, down below. And if you'd like to see more content, more videos on the psychology of sport, then yeah, let us know. And please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share it with your friends.
if you've got any. I'm gonna go now. Love you. Bye.